thing about self-discipline is that it is necessary for everything you do in your life. You have to be self-disciplined. Working out, working out, you gotta work out every day. You gotta stay in shape. If you wanna, I mean, if you don't stay in shape, you die. When I'm working out, I always do one extra rep, one extra set, because it, it's a promise I kept to myself. But, but working out might not be a priority for every single day because you've got things going on in your business world and with your family and all that. So guess what? It's a priority for my life, so I do it in the morning before my day even starts. If you change your mindset and really focus it on what discipline really is, you start to welcome discipline. You welcome self-discipline into your life. And here's the biggest thing, it's a pattern. It's a pattern I keep of me. I always do a little extra. I always go the extra inch. And the quickest and easiest place to do it is the gym. Because I can always grab one more weight, one more set. And it, here's what it does, it shifts your identity. The benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. I do it in the morning before my day even starts. So I can still handle the priorities for the day but I got my workout done. So long term, I look up in a year and I'm not out of shape and breathing hard when I go up in the stairs because I maintain that discipline on a daily basis. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. You need to tell you no more snacks, no more desserts, no more TV, no more, no, we working out now have skills and abilities but if you don't nurture them if you don't develop them they will never serve you your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts the best gifts come from the bottom i value myself enough to give 120 percent or don't do it and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what i do well why are you only giving 50 percent what's wrong with you i grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts. You'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the strength of character. You need to tell you that you owe you something. As you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny. I want freedom. And for me, disciplining myself means more freedom. It's so easy to, you know, to, to be great nowadays because everybody else is, most people are, are weak. This, this is a softened generation. So if you have any mental toughness, any, any ability, if you have any fraction, of self-discipline, the ability to not want to do it, but still do it. People have a, a hard thing to understand. I hate to run. And, and, and what makes me so crazy, it doesn't need more, is people go, well, well, why do you run if you hate it? What are you talking about? I don't want to take showers and eat either. I hate that too. The, the whole, that's life, man. That, and and, and it, it wasn't until I changed that mentality that I became somebody. I hated going to school, so guess what? I was dumb as But if you can get through to doing things that you hate to do, on the other side is greatness. That's what people understand. By me running, I am callous in my mind. I'm not training for a race. I'm training for life. I'm training for the time when I get that two o'clock in the morning call that my mom is dead or something happens tragic in life. I don't fall apart. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one, so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble and you're good for nobody. 99% of people are not willing to do what it takes to make their dreams come true. The Marines have a saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. The center of bringing any dream into fruition is self-discipline. You know, some, something as simple as 
food and eating it's not about your your body as much as it is about your mind it's getting command of your mind to be able to choose actions that are in your own best interest every day we are choosing that's not in our own best interest so if the world is attacking you and the world wants to fight you and the world's trying to hold you down so you gonna kick yourself in the balls so you gonna stop yourself from getting what you dream and I think the word discipline has kind of gotten a, a bad name we think about it in terms of punishment I'm not I'm not talking about discipline in that way I'm talking about discipline in the sense that you you forego immediate pleasure for the exchange of long-term self-respect. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. That when you say that you love yourself, that means that you have behavior towards yourself that is loving. Self Discipline is the center of all material success. You cannot win the war against the world if you can't win the war against your own mind. Self-love is when you say to yourself, oh, man, look, I know you and that girl got a real connection. Um, I know y'all vibe, but that's your girl's cousin. So I love you too much to let you do that. It's like you say to yourself, hey man, look, I know you want to eat that pizza and it'll be really good, you know, but I can't let you eat that, man. Cause if, if you eat that pizza, you're gonna feel like shit, you know, and I, I just, I love you too much to let you eat that. Self-love is, hey, look, I know you got a, a, a test on Monday, you know, and I know you really want to go out with your friends and Saturday night you want to go out, but if you fail that test, you're not going to feel good about yourself. You know, I just, I love you too much to let you go out tonight. Self-discipline is self-love. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself, which means you have to discipline your behavior. The road to sustained happiness is through disciplining your behavior. We tend to base our self-esteem on what other people think. And that's not really self-esteem. Self-esteem is supposed to be how we feel about ourselves. And I was just saying how dangerous it is to allow other people to determine how you're going to feel about you and it's kind of like looking into a broken mirror you're going to look in a broken mirror and then change your face to try to look good in this defiled busted broken mirror and it, it just other people's opinions is a really way to determine how we feel about ourselves Life can be brutal. Life can be unforgiving. If I had to sum up in one word the difference between the greats and the average, the difference between the successful and the nobodies of the world, one word, one attribute to describe the difference, discipline. If you don't have the discipline, you can forget about the trophy. You can forget about the success, the greatness. All champions have discipline. It's the discipline to work hard. You know, not when everyone is watching, but when no one is watching, when the fans aren't there, when the coach isn't there, when it's just you and your character. The discipline to eat strong, healthy foods. When you have other tempting options. When those around you might not be so strong. 
the discipline to say no when those around you choose to be average. The discipline to keep going when it hurts because life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And if you haven't worked for it, if you haven't sacrificed for it, if you haven't given your all, then you don't deserve it. And you won't get it. Push through the pain. On the other side is growth. When pain comes, that means it's time to show character. Show me your character. Remain disciplined. Stay strong. When it all seems hopeless, keep plugging away. Nothing can stop you if you don't stop for anything. Don't stop for anything. Never break your discipline. Remain faithful to yourself and your vision. When it gets painful, push harder. Push through the pain. You got to have the discipline to do 11 when your opponent stops at 10. The discipline to keep going when it hurts. Because life doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you deserve. And if you haven't worked for it, if you haven't sacrificed for it, if you haven't given your all, then you don't deserve it. And you won't get it. Show your character. Remain disciplined. Stay strong. Don't say why the pain. Don't say why me. Say try me. Say is that all you've got? Give me more. Keep plugging away when there seems to be no hope of victory. When you don't see the results, hang in there. Be strong, be brave, remain disciplined. And your time will come. I was weighing like 297 pounds and I had to make a change in my life you know I was at an all-time low and I wasn't going anywhere and I was exactly what everybody said I was gonna be which was nothing this man is a self-made beast widely considered to be the toughest man on the planet and one of the greatest endurance athletes of all time I was just an insecure, scared kid. And the only way I could find myself was to put myself through the worst thing possible. He's the only member of the U.S. Armed Forces to complete SEAL training, the U.S. Army Ranger School, and the Air Force Tactical Air Controller training. He's completed the infamous destroyer of men known as Hell Week three times including two in a single year, and one that he started and finished with multiple stress fractures and a hernia. No one was here to help me. And the feeling I had every morning, I started shaving my head when I was 16 years old. And the feeling I had every morning, I looked in the mirror, was horrible. And I didn't want to feel like that anymore. And how I felt was a, a kid going nowhere, a kid that was scared. And most kids will accept that and look for help. But the best thing that happened to me no one helped me. He served in combat in Iraq, was the bodyguard for the Iraqi Prime Minister. He once held the Guinness World Record for most pull-ups in 24 hours at 4,030. No one felt sorry for me. No one looked at me and said, like this day and age, they'll, they'll take you in and they'll tell you, I stop picking on this person. Back then, they didn't care. I had to build calluses in my brain the same way I built calluses on my hands. So I broke the Ginsburg World's record for pull-ups a long time ago, but I failed at it twice. And I did 67,000 pull-ups <laughs> in trying to break this record. So to do 4,030 pull-ups, I had to do 67,000 for training for that. He's run eight, eight consecutive 100-mile races over eight back-to-back -back weekends. He ran over 7,000 miles in a single year, and that is the equivalent of running 267 marathons. I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. 
you had to have a goal. My goal was the only person that's going to turn this person around is me. The only way I can turn it around is put myself through the worst things possible a human being can ever endure. And that would be the only way that I can build this brain to handle anything that comes in front of it, callousing my mind right. through pain and suffering. The only way you're ever going to get to the other side of this journey is you have got to suffer to grow. To grow, you must suffer. I'm afraid of my shadow. How can I overcome that? Go in the military, get your ass kicked, do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb motherfucker. Okay, roger that. How do you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we're running from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. If you can for the rest of your life live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You gotta just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. Around 97% of students are distracted by cell phones. Are you a part of that 97%? When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. Whether your distractions are text messages, checking emails, surfing the web, playing games, or scrolling through social media, the fact remains that it is a distraction. I'm saying to you today that there are some of you, if you give up your cell phone, you would be successful. But your cell phone is more important to you than your success. Stop wasting time on your cell phone. Facebook isn't going anywhere. Instagram will still be here this weekend. Focus on your dreams. Focus on your studies. Focus on your goals and aspirations. Put the thing down. Yeah. Look up. You're missing stuff. What is the long-term effect of too much information? We don't know, but we're finding out. Focus on becoming a better you. A better you that is not distracted by unnecessary things. You gotta cut off the cell phone. You got it, no TV. There were those of you who were watching the game last night, you really didn't have no business watching these boys win a national title, going to the NBA, make a million. You didn't have no business watching them because you're not where you need to be. One that is determined to succeed and not scroll, that is determined to prosper and not post, to grow all day and not gain all day. Stop wasting time on your cell phone. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. It's about you and your future. It's about your grades. It's about your dreams. Ultimately, it's about your life. The time you spend on your cell phone could be used for your success. The time you could be using to be successful, you're using it on the cell. And the cell phone is not bringing you nothing but a bill. Is your life more important than that app, than that game, that post? I need cell phones off. Listen to me. Some of you are going to be broke for the rest of your life because of that little thing on, on, on the side. You're going to be broke for the rest of your life because of a little cell phone. We're so plugged into our cell phones, 
that we become blind to the world around us. And somebody has told you, you couldn't live without it. We can't take our eyes off the screen long enough to see the beauty of the world around us. It don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken if it's your responsibility to fix it. For example, it's, it's not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic, but it's for damn sure their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. Fault and responsibility do not go together. It sucks, but they don't. When something is somebody's fault, we want them to suffer. We want them punished. We want them to, to pay. And we want it to be their responsibility to fix it, but that's, that's not how it works, especially when it's your heart. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. As long as we're pointing the finger and, and, and stuck in whose fault something is, we're jammed and trapped into victim mode. When you're in victim mode, you are stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. You can make a person smile, you can make a person feel good, you can make a person laugh, but whether or not a person is happy is deeply and totally and utterly out of your control. The prerequisite for spending time with any person is that they nourish and inspire you. They feed your flame. Look at your last five text messages. Are those people feeding your flames or dousing your fire? Put your phone down for just a second and look around. Look to the people around you. Are those people throwing logs on your fire or are they pissing on it? I want my life, I want my, my work, uh, my, my family, I want it to mean something. And it's like, it has, if, if you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. You, you don't try to build a wall. You don't set out to build a wall. You don't say, I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall that's ever been built. You don't start there. You say, I'm gonna lay this brick as perfectly as a brick can be laid. There will not be one brick on the face of the earth that's gonna be laid better than this brick that I'm gonna lay in this next 10 minutes. Yeah. And you do that every single day. And soon you have a wall. And soon you have a wall. Yeah. And I think psychologically, the advantage that that, that gives me over, over a lot of people that I've, I'm, have been in competition with in different situations is it's difficult to take the first step when you look how big yeah, exactly. the, the task is. The definition of who I am is very clear to me and it also redefines who I want to be in that I know for a fact that I'm stronger than I thought I was. You know, you can't help but ask yourself the question, what would I do if I was in Muhammad Ali's shoes? I'm, I'm motivated by fear. I hate being scared to do something. And I think what developed uh, in, my, in my early days was the, the attitude that I started attacking things that I was scared of. Why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? 
Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? Fear is, fear of what? You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything's up to the stepping out. There's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden, where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. And they had the nerve to count you out. That's because they didn't understand that your motivation would never let you stay down for the count. It's times like these that we separate the real from the fake. And when it's like you can take a punch and bounce right back because you understand and know exactly what's at stake. It's times like these that we separate the real from the fake. And when it's like you can take a punch, bounce right back because you understand and know exactly what's at stake. It's money time, baby. And this is for all of the marbles. It's put up or shut up. Survive in advance. Win or go home. And that's why you spend all those hours grinding. That's why you spend all those hours pushing yourself to the limit. You spend all those hours running. That's why you spend all those hours sacrificing. You spend all those hours sweating because you know there will be no time for regretting, fretting, or letting yourself or your teammates down. See, you are bound and determined to enter into the realm of greatness that's reserved for you and only you. And so if the day ever comes that you're tired enough to quit, then I need you to act like a car with four flats and retire. I don't think you heard me. I said, if the day ever comes that you are tired enough to quit, then I need you to act like a car with four flats and retire. Next level success is reserved for those that are willing to not start counting the reps until it starts hurting. Not start counting the shots made until their arms are dead tired. Not start counting the sprints until they're already breathing hard. I heard a wise man say, it hurts, but it works. I say when it hurts, then and only then will you start receiving the perks, the accolades, the attaboys, the atta girls, the great jobs, the alley-oop lives, the celebration parties with the lobster and shish kebabs, the hoisting of the banners, the sizing for the rings, the smiles, the hugs, and all of the love and respect in between. See, some of you out there, you in the dark. <laughs> and you know what I need you to do for me when you're in the dark, right? Turn the lights on when I'm talking to you, because I don't think you heard me. I said, next level success is reserved for those that are willing to not start counting the reps until it starts hurting. Not start counting the shots made until their arms are dead tired. Not start counting the sprints until they're already breathing hard. So just when they think you're about to throw in the towel, that's when I need you to recall all of the days that you went that extra mile. All of them days that your friend said you were fouled. When you said you couldn't hang out because you were dialed in. You were locked in. You were in a zone. So you had to be strong because you knew the day would come when you would have to show the world that you could overcome any adversity, any obstacles, any hardships, any setbacks because you were prepared for any and everything. And you understood that it would be impossible to run with them cheetahs when you're walking with the turtles. You understood that it would be impossible for you to run with the cheetahs when you were walking with the turtles. So your mindset is that of a track star and that gives you the mental strength to leap over life's hurdles, to power through the speed bumps, to push through the roadblocks and continue to grind past any and every obstruction that attempts to deter you from your ultimate goal of next level success. So the stresses of the world, <laughs> you laugh at. The dreams they say are out of your reach, you grab at. The things they say you can't achieve, you take a stab at. And when the bullies of life try to knock you out, you stick and move and you jab at. I said the stresses of the world, <laughs> you laugh at. The dreams they say are out of your reach, you go and grab at them. The things they say you can't achieve, you take a stab at them. And when the bullies of life try to knock you out, you stick and move and you jab at them. And on the rare occasion that you take a punch from life and it knocks you down, you dig deep and then you dig deeper and then you dig even deeper because you understand that this is the moment 
to pick yourself up. Push through with determination and grit because of all your resiliency, commitment, hard work, perseverance. You have now put yourself in position to show the world that you got that dog. And your inner dog has no quit. I said this is the moment to pick yourself up and push through with determination and grit because of all your resiliency, commitment, hard work, perseverance. You have put yourself in a position to show the world that you got that dog. And your inner dog has no quit. I hated jumping out of airplanes. I hated shooting guns. I hated the job as a Navy SEAL. But I did it because I wanted to change myself. Everything I do, I'm not really comfortable doing. But if you choose to go that route, to go be a Navy SEAL, you might as well go be the hardest mother in the world. Because if you're choosing to do something, you have two routes. You can go there and be a little, a little weak person and get through barely, and that's your reputation. Or you can go through the hardest guy you can possibly be, and that's your reputation. So my whole thing is, if you're gonna choose to open that door in Iraq or Afghanistan, open the mother and go in hard. Because they're gonna remember you by slowly opening it and peeking in. So if you're gonna open it, and you made the mind to open it, don't crack it open. Open the door go in, that's with life. If you're, choosing to do, if you're choosing to do something, attack it. Because they're gonna remember you as not attacking it. So I want to be remembered. You can hate me, but there's one thing you can't say about me. I didn't attack it. So that's the mentality you have. If you're gonna do something, you might as well attack it. Because you can do it anyway. Right. Who on this earth would still be going right now? You are. You are.